Hello, and welcome back. Tonight's movie, Friday the 13th, mm -hmm. the original, mm -hmm. which is from, I believe, 1980, and it doesn't have the date on here, so I'm just going to go with that. Um, I've always wanted to see it, never seen it, so I saw it. Yeah. Glad I saw it. What'd you think? Oh, it was a piece of shit. <laughs> it's, it's actually a lot, it was a lot slower than I remember, but I think I have mixed memory of a bunch of the Friday movies. Because I know in a lot of the other ones, it's more of like a slasher, where he's already established, he already has the backstory, so he's just killing people all the time. This tried too hard to be Alfred Hitchcock and failed. It did. Actually, there were several times in the movie where I felt like, wow, you really stole that right from Hitchcock. Like, the, the psycho thing with the violin strings, like, that was very, that was very Hitchcock. And, yeah, it was, it's not necessarily bad, but it's definitely slow. If I don't mind the slowness, because, you know, that was ASMR shit for me, so that was fine. But it was not good. It was really not good. The, old, the one thing I liked was the way they lit the rain. For some reason, that was nice. It the did rain, actually look pretty good. The rain looked really cool. And it did. I liked that. That was the only part of the movie. There was a couple things that I think were at least shot well. There were like, a couple shots that I feel like had some good lighting or good angles that really made it feel like... You're not on a set. You're actually in a camp of the woods. Yes. Like, visually, I think it looks... I mean, for the time, obviously. It, it looks really good. No, I don't know about... I mean, none of the kills... Either the kill wasn't shown on screen, or when it was, it was such bad prosthetics. It was just like... Yeah. Why? Well, this is also 40 years ago. <sighs> but now, what did you think about the twist? Well, twist. Like, with the mom being the killer. I mean, I guess it, it was wasn't, stupid. It wasn't really a twist, because... See, I remember this different, too. I thought they established the story before that. I didn't remember her reveal also being Jason's backstory. So I was kind of confused as to why, when we got to that point, I'm like, we don't even know who Jason is yet. Right. Like, they mentioned that a kid died, and two years later, counselors died, but... They never even tied that together to explain that. Did they, they say died. something like that back in the yeah. day? Yeah, like it was um, such a surpassing glance that it didn't even affect me. I didn't yeah. even notice it. When when Annie or whoever was in the truck mm -hmm. with uh, Enos, mm -hmm. he's like, "Oh yeah, there are these two kids died there in '56, and in '55 another boy drowned." But yeah, it was just a passing, quick little reference. Like it wasn't. I knew to look for it, so I caught it, but. If it's your first time watching, which obviously it was for you, you're not going to put that together. It's not going to mean anything. You haven't been told that that's important information yet. So yeah, it was it was odd from a storytelling standpoint to not really reveal anything until the end. Like usually, you want to give some of the killer's motive before they start killing, right? Otherwise, yeah. you're just like, all right, people are randomly dying, I guess. Right. But you're not invested. You don't know why they're dying. It wasn't a shock. And when it was revealed that it was just an old lady, I was like, it's an old lady. Yeah. It's like, like unless, you know, teenagers back in the day, old people were scary. I don't know. And, and old she, people every time, scary. every time that all the kills before you knew it was her were powerful and yeah, <clears throat> epic, you know, epic. I mean, an axe cleaved to the but face. But when it, when it, when it, once it was revealed that it was an old lady wielding, you know, the murderer's knives and mm -hmm. shit, she could barely swing. And she would miss every time. Yeah. And I will say, that's one thing, not that it's what you want in a movie, but the fight on the beach at the end between her and the one counselor, because I don't remember the fucking names, um, that was probably the most realistic fight I've ever seen in a movie. Like, they were both just stumbling and fumbling on the sand, and they were missing more swings than they were hitting. So it was very realistic. Like, if an old lady and a young teenage girl were to fight, that's probably what it would look like. Yeah. It would devolve to them scrambling on the ground, pulling hair and biting. Yeah. And it did. But that's not what you want to see in a movie. You want to see choreographed fights. You want to see people land punches. You want, you want to see something good. Once one old person gets hit once, even mildly, their bones are going to shatter, and they're going to be like, <laughs> where's my doctor? Not all yeah. old people are in the same horrible shape we are. Yeah. Yeah. We, there's, no, there's no fight for an old woman. I don't care how badly you want to avenge your son's death. Once you're old, that's it. Mm -hmm. You're done once you get hit. 
Now, how'd you feel about the second twist thing at the very end, where you find out that Jason's alive and he pulled her into the lake? Was that supposed to actually have happened? It wasn't a dream? No, it was a thing that happened. That actually happened? It wasn't like... Yeah. Yeah, that's a thing that happened. Is it, though? Uh-huh. Because it seemed more like a dream to me. There's like 12 more movies, so if that didn't happen, you're destroying the entire timeline. Well, then they set it up pretty damn bad. I mean, like I was saying, I was saying just before it happened, is Jason going to pop up, and all of a sudden he pops up. But then she, you know, wakes in the hospital, so I was like, oh, it was just a dream. Yeah. No, the, the cops saw him pull her under, and they rescued her. But, yeah, Jason is, he's a thing. Yeah, that was stupid. They did that poorly. Poorly executed. Which it makes me wonder if they went into this movie like if, planning on doing more. Because, like, I know back then almost all horror movies, you know, left it open for a sequel. Like, if you watch Nightmare or Child's Play or any of those, they always kind of leave it open. But this, like, leaving Jason till the very end there feels like they were intentionally, like, they went into it already planning the second movie. Like, this was basically scripted to be part one, and part two was already a thought. Was this a hit when it came out? Um, that I don't remember. Like, I know it's always considered one of the classics. You know, when people talk about horror franchises, they talk about Freddy, they talk about Jason, they talk about Mike Myers, they talk about Chucky. Like, this is one of, like, the big, from the golden age of horror, this is one of the franchises they talk about. Oh, no. If that's the golden age of horror, we're all screwed, because that's not quality. Again, 40 years ago. People's expectations were a lot different. Like, it is it is interesting to think of, like, modern movies like Mama or As Above, So Below or those kind of not things. Not even comparing with, to that? If I would have seen this back in the day? I'm not even thinking effects. Just basic storytelling and pacing. Because I feel like movies are a lot faster now. They get into the story quicker. They draw they your are. attention more. They are. But look at Jaws. Jaws is, like, three hours of the slowest movie you've ever seen. And it's just so good. Like, that, the first time I saw that, it was just, like, edge of my seat, suspense... The acting is great. See, I never got that feel from it. Really? I mean, it's but a good this movie, is just but... this is just trying too damn hard and just failing it at all. Like if I would have seen this when I was a little kid, I'd been like, "That's stupid." Like, yeah, I had nightmares about King Kong and the Lucky Charms leprechaun. I swear to God, that's what, that was what terrified me when I was a little child. And then a group and saw signs and turned to aliens. But this would have not scared me in the least bit if I was oh. looking at this when I was four or five. I think the only thing that ever really scared me as a kid was, and I think I've told you this before, a f I think it was a Phil Collins music video, where at one point he's looking out a window, and it's all dark, the and air. then you see a white outline of a person. Is it the in the air video? I think so. Yeah. And just the inverse colors, and just a silhouette being white like that. I don't know. I found that creepy as hell as a kid. That one kind of bothered me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But we're, we're way off tangent now. So, overall, what would you say? Like, rating-wise? Three. Really? So not even, like, average? No. Like, I liked it because it had the slow ASMR bits, and the rain looked cool, and I liked the setting. But the acting was garbage. And I know I used to be an annoying, loud, embarrassing teenager, but I fucking hate them now. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, the slashing, the murders weren't anything spectacular. Mm-hmm. The twist at the end was garbage. Yeah, I didn't... Nothing about this oh. was... I will say, I'm probably going to go with a five. Coming into it, I thought it would be higher. But, like I said, I think I'm remembering a mix of, like, the first three movies altogether. Because I did remember it being faster-paced, and it being more of a slasher film, and less of a slow burn. Well, this is the... Uh, you said this is the uncut, and it says uncut, so I wonder if they just added more... It could be, too. It could have been that they added an More ambiance of the camp itself. And... I don't know. Really, they're way too much small writing, so I'm not going to try and read that now. But, yeah, they probably added in some stuff that stretched it out a little, so that might be part of the slow, but... And yeah. I want to go back... The one thing I do want to go back is when Ned dies, Kevin Bacon and the chick are making out on the dock, and then uh -huh. Ned sees the person in the camp... Like, there's a one quick glimpse of a face up there. I'd like to get a still frame of that yeah. to see if it's her. I, I do know what scene you're talking about, because I actually was wondering that at the time, too, because I already knew it was Jason's mom. I'm like, is that her? Because it looks like a really big build. So, well, like I said, when she got her head chopped off, and it was absolutely 110% man hands instead of hers. 
I'm gonna laugh if it was all her and she just has man hands. I mean, they were huge and hairy. Like, they were <laughs> lots of hair. Like, Italian dark hair on those hands. Okay, we can stop looking at my hands. Um, I thought you had more hand, hair on your hands. I, I, I mean, do, you do on the edge. It's, yeah, you got some. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, they I grow hair on the knuckles. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but, yeah. So, that's that one. Uh, I was actually a little underwhelmed, too. It has been a while. But, yeah. So, there we are. That's Friday the 13th. And I really probably should have timed it out and had this on the 13th. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow for another movie.